Hey guys, welcome to the Chad Brather Show. It's Tuesday and it's Monday's Hangover, which means we're going to get to some stuff we didn't get to yesterday. Uh, and I'm still pissed off. I am still pissed off. You know what I'm pissed off about today, guys? I'll tell you. I don't mind telling you guys. Uh, it's the incompetence that's in the world. Absolutely insane. Um, Brandon, Chris, Kayla, George, let me tell you, um, we talked about this a little bit yesterday and Chris, Chris loves to rub the salt in the wound. He loves to send me stuff that he knows is going to piss me off. Um, and I know, I know, I'm one of those guys that should just leave it all alone and not worry about what anybody thinks about anything, right? I'm just like, yo, just let everybody be themselves. Well, that's fine, except your incompetence actually affects me. And so, as Sarah said yesterday, it's the laziness that leads to incompetence, and we're living in a society that is absolutely inundated with this level of laziness, okay? It's showing up everywhere. It's showing up in our churches, in our politics, in our schools, in the way we go out to eat. It shows up in our entertainment. People are lazy. People are incompetent. Now, if you don't believe me, Chris sent me a clip last night, and I want you to just wrap your head around what I'm about to show you, okay? How many, how many times have you gone through a drive through And I know we shouldn't go through drive throughs We shouldn't. I understand. Before you clap back at me, we shouldn't. We should be eat, all eating fruits and vegetables and other pesticides or, you know, just, you know, grass-fed beef and all of this stuff and be healthy and then finish it off with a dessert of bacteria-filled yogurt for our probiotic gut health. I know! But sometimes, late at night, you just have to have a little Taco Bell. And you know what you want? You want it to be fast food. You're not going in there with healthy, conscious choices. You're not. You're just going in there because, you know what? I just need something to satiate my gluttony. And you get there, and you wait, and you wait, and you wait. You know why you wait? Because you got people like this working in your drive through Play the clip. Look at this guy. Look at this guy. <laughs> now, at first glance, you're like, this kid, he's so tired, he's just falling asleep standing there. I don't know if he's cranked out. I, I don't think so, because usually people on crank have more energy. No, I don't know if this is heroin. What is it? It's opiates. It's 1,000% opiates. Is this it's opium? Like, he's not an off. It's got probably fentanyl, to be honest. Probably fentanyl. Yeah. I actually watched this, and I was rather impressed. He doesn't fall over. He doesn't fall this over. He doesn't fall Taco down. This is Taco Bell and Niles off 11th Street. Now, the guy driving the car doesn't sound too awake either. He well, sounds about like me after an evening on the uh, on the Mezcal waiting on my Taco Bell. Bro, I was going to say, he is a Taco Bell. Are you too. good? Yeah. yeah. What's going on with you, man? Oh, man, I've just been working. No, we're waiting for food, man. You got a whole line. You've been sitting here nodding out at Look the at drink machine, man. Yeah, I feel that, bro. It's bro, you should probably not be working right now. I feel that, bro. It's just been a long time. Nah, man. <laughs> no. Dude, we're waiting for food. I get We've been that, sitting yeah. here waiting. He sits there and he looks back at the line like, oh, shit, there's people. Oh, I forgot I was at a job. And then, and then he's like, bro. And like he starts to nod off right there like he's standing around waiting on more conversation. In his defense, there was probably only one car in the drive-thru before he started nodding off. <laughs> right. And then he woke up and there were about 15 of them. Well, he's not wearing the headset, so he's not the guy taking the orders. He's just operating the drink machine there. Or he's nodding off and headbutting the thing. He's falling into it. Now, that's sad. It's sad if the kid's on drugs. I hope he gets the help. I hope he saves his life because he's probably going to be dead in the next couple of years if he, if he doesn't get that. That's a sad deal. But again, what type of society are we fostering where this is okay? Now, I get... And again, I want to go back to the root cause. Let's go back to some first principles. They literally shut our country down for three years. They shut our country down. There's still vax mandates out there, even though the Biden administration is talking about getting rid of those. Uh, those of us that pushed it as a conspiracy theory, those of us who spoke out against it, who, 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 you know, ruined our lives in many ways, lost a lot of people that, you know, were near and dear to us, lost small fortunes by deciding to run for office because they were fighting back against this BS. People like me, if you're not keeping up. And they shut us down. They masked you up. They put your children behind plexiglass. They, they, they made you breathe through an N95 mask. There were altercations on airplanes. There were people who couldn't go to see their grandparents in the nursing home. People died alone. 
again, why? Because of these weird ass emergency measures that amounted to nothing. Six foot distancing. Really, I want you to put that in your head. Six foot distancing. That was going to save your life. You were going to be forced to stand six feet or hug somebody through some plastic piece of crap with armholes, and that was going to save your life because you weren't breathing on anybody. Forget the thousands of years of human history where we have breathed shit on each other forever and somehow managed to live through it. I mean, we got through the ages, you know, like ice ages. We, we, (laughs) We migrated thousands of miles across the oceans and the countries that we live in. We settled lands. We were eaten by animals. Um, we we were we we survived smallpox and polio and all the, the black plague for crying out loud with the dark ages the guillotine man's inhumanity to man but there was a virus there was a virus and that virus caused us to shut our worlds down and you know what happened all the companies out there all the businesses out there they either if they didn't go under they had to change the way they did business. And now, once things open back up, once we could now eat in public once again, go to drive throughs actually engage with other human beings, guess what? Nobody wanted to go to work. You, want, you don't want to know why? Because we, we actually funded their freaking laziness to sit at the couch, sit on the couch, send them a stimulus check, and they could play their video games and talk to the world through the internet, and they didn't have to do anything. And now the world opens back up. So suddenly these help wanted signs began to appear in all the restaurants, in all of the public places. And then nobody wanted to go back to work. So the help wanted signs turned into, um, please be patient with our service because we're understaffed. To now you're hiring drug addicts to work the drive-through at the Taco Bell. Now, I understand you'll live if you don't get your burrito supreme and your extra packs of fire sauce in a timely manner. But what happens when this carries on to more more important matters? You know, like our military is asleep at the wheel. And you say, well, that would never happen. Bullshit. Bullshit, bullshit, bullshit. People aren't joining the military anymore. You know why? Because the military has become woke. The military has become an absolute joke in terms of its ideas of diversity and inclusivity and acceptance all the way to the point (laughs) where the Biden administration and his representatives are now saying that in the next, what, 10 years, they hope that all military vehicles are electric vehicles. That's right. That's right. They literally said that the other day. They want the tanks, the armored cars, the Humvees. All of the, you know, all of this stuff is going to be electric vehicles. That's right. We're going to send electric battery powered vehicles into war. And you're like, Chad, how does your mind work? Well, I I saw a guy passing out of the Taco Bell and I realized we're screwed. All of that because we're screwed. We've created a lazy, incompetent society. Oh, you don't believe me? You don't think the government is incompetent? Jerome Powell. Jerome Powell gets on a, what, a Zoom call? Yeah. with Zelensky, with Volodymyr Zelensky, you know, the president, the poobah, the dictator, whatever the F he is, you know, whatever 501c3 money laundering operation he's running in the Ukraine and making billions of billions of dollars from home. Jerome Powell has a call with Zelensky. Watch this. Um, and uh, But what we're going to find is that growth in 2022 was was positive but modest. It was subdued. So, you know. 1% around that, that level. Um, in terms of this year, most forecasts call for the U.S. economy to continue to grow, but at a pretty subdued level. So growth of less than 1%, let's say. But we, ha- we would tell you that, that a recession is almost as likely as, as, as very slow growth. Um, so that's, that, that's a fact. And, and I think that is partly because of, uh, of us having raised rates quite a bit. But this is what it takes to get inflation down. We, to get inflation off of the high, we've had inflation at its highest level in, in, in 40 years. To get inflation to come down, what we need is a period of slower growth so that the economy can cool off, so the labor market can cool off. 
so that wages can cool off. And so that that's how inflation comes down. That's the only way we know to bring inflation down. And it can be painful, but there is, we don't know of any painful way, painless way uh -huh. uh, for inflation to come down. All right. Now, that's a Zoom call, right? With Zelensky. But he's not on with Zelensky. He's being pranked. Do we know who was pranking him? He's not even on the thing with Zelensky. Yeah, they're, they're playing a joke on him. This is Jerome Powell, who's explaining inflation and how we're bringing inflation down. Because that's a conversation you're supposed to be having with Vladimir Zelensky. But he's not even on the phone with Zelensky. The CIA, former CIA chief, has a meeting, has three meetings, right? With Jeffrey Epstein after he's been convicted of being a child molester. And he says, well, I didn't know who I was meeting with. I was having questions. It was questions about wealth management or some shit like that. You're, you're. <laughs> okay. Let me tell you something. I get messages all the time. People, people want to meet with me. People, people want to have meetings. They, they want to talk about ways to do business together. Things like that. Um, I'm nobody, literally nobody. I'm certainly not the head of the CIA. The clandestine, you know, uh, intelligence organization, basically that runs the world, uh, is supposed to know everything. Um, I don't just go meet with people I don't know. I know something about them before I go. It has to be worth my while. I have to know who it is. Just like when Donald Trump had, uh, had dinner with Kanye and he brings Nick Fuentes and he didn't know who Nick Fuentes was. He hasn't gone back and met with Nick Fuentes again. He certainly didn't do it three times and said, oh, let me go back and talk to Nick Fuentes again about how to, you know, reach another generation uh, on social media. Um, no, because Nick Fuentes is a putz. As soon as he found out who Nick Fuentes was, cut that off. And everybody's like, oh, my God, he met with Nick Fuentes. <laughs> Holy shit, he met with Nick Fuentes. But you don't have anybody out there going, hey, the director of the CIA had three meetings after his conviction with Jeffrey Epstein. Nobody. But they're just ready to sweep it under the rug because it's incompetence. It's incompetence. It's incompetence. That's the world we're living in. So it goes all the way from a kid on fentanyl who's nodding off at the drink machine at the Taco Bell in the drive-thru in Niles, wherever. To the, to the head of the CIA meeting with Jeffrey Epstein. Didn't kill himself. Uh, oh, Joe Biden. Let's take it all the way to the top. We know. See, see, again, 81 million people apparently were willing to vote for Joe Biden and his incompetence because we're lazy. Effing lazy. He was just the guy. You didn't like Donald Trump. So let's put a brain dead fart in the Oval Office. Here he is. Um, he had this to say about Islam. Play it. You know, the quorum teaches that. What? One of his highest signs is the creation of heavens and what? earth. He said the quorum, not the Quran, not the holy book. Do you know if you said that in the wrong place to the wrong people, they'd cut your head off? That is the, is, that is the Muslim holy book. Child, uh, in the, the same, quorum. In the same speech, he tells them... Uh, a judge, a federal a judge, hush boy. <laughs> I think if you remember back in the days, boy coming from a white cis. I mean male you're saying it. I'm not I'm just saying. Was considered something like the N-word. I'm just saying it's still it, it's still oh, it that still way. Is. Oh, okay. Hush Sorry. boy. Hush boy. Oof. <laughs> wow. One of them Delaware plantation owners named Biden. Hush, boy. <laughs> I don't know how many plantation, I mean, a plantation by any other name is just a farm, a very racist farm. Hush, boy. The quorum. <laughs> but again, y'all are so lazy, you sweep it under the rug. Our society is so lazy, you don't even hold anybody accountable for their incompetence. At least Chris Cruz tagged Taco Bell and said, what do you got to say about this, Taco Bell? somebody so thank you i said all that to say this thank you for not drinking bud light <laughs> consequences damn it
All right, guys, uh, we know we're living in a dangerous world. There are Americans. There should be a lot of Americans like yourselves that are concerned about a very real possibility of prolonged food shortages. <laughs> so I want to encourage everyone to secure a supply of long-term emergency food while you still can. Now, the other day, uh, on my drive into the studio, I ordered another three-month supply from my Patriot Supply. They don't give it to me. They, they would. They would. But I support the people that I believe in. Um, they're the nation's largest preparedness company, and right now they're offering a special deal. When you buy that emergency a uh, three-month emergency food kit, which lasts up to 25 years in the right storage. With each kit, you're going to get a bonus package of crucial survival gear worth over $200, and you're going to get it for free. So the three-month emergency food kit is going to guarantee your family is going to have peace of mind during a disaster. The survival gear will help you be even more prepared. you got the breakfast, lunches, and dinners, drinks, snacks, over 2,000 calories a day. You need a kit for every member of your family. They're all going to love it. So get your emergency food, get your free survival gear worth over $200 at My Patriot Supply. Com. That is MyPatriotSupply.com. We'll be right back. You. Hey, Judge, how are you? I don't know why you wanted the job, man. I appoint all those federal judges, but you know, Thank you for serving. I'm not kidding. You want to come and make a speech? <laughs> Hush up, boy. Wow. Wow, he must have been one of those uh, smart, clean blacks. You know, the, one of those, uh, what was it he said about Barack Obama? He's clean, smart, good looking. <laughs> I like that he even threw a little southern twang in there with the hush boy. Hush boy. Yeah. Hush up, boy. Um, incompetence, I tell you. Uh, it leads to laziness. I, listen, I, I'm going to talk about this for a minute because the incompetent thing, again, we're erasing, we're erasing an ethic, okay? We, we're taking away a, a value system that I think makes us, well, it gives us rules to live by. And I know nobody wants any rules. You want to be a bunch of libertines, you do whatever you want to do. If you want to be a minor attracted person, there shouldn't be a law against that. You know, we shouldn't judge people too harshly um, when they say, hey, you know what? Uh, males, biological males can't compete against biological females in sports. And they pass a law in Oklahoma and these people are crying, oh, my God, I can't live in this state anymore. Because <laughs> Well, you're not an athlete. You weren't trying to compete against women. You know, and, and you what well, you can't, you know. You can't sexually try to transition, you know, children under the age of 18. You're going to make a log is that, oh, my God, oh, they're persecuting us. Or no, your children can't be at your damn pride parade. Well, we're just going to cancel the whole damn thing. Again, we look at stuff like that and you say, well, uh, <laughs> do you not see the problem here when, when you have people who just want to do whatever? It, listen, a river with no banks is a swamp, okay? You've got to have some standards in society. You've got to have some cultural mores. You've got to have, you've got to have some rules to live by. There's got to be some standards. There's got to be some roles that you adhere to. We want to get rid of all of that stuff and just, boop, let's let it ooze out. It's a mile wide. It's an inch deep. You know what swamps attract? Now, it's a very vibrant ecosystem. There's, there's a lot of things that live in a swamp. But there's also a lot of things you don't really want to mess with. There's, there's some snakes in there, and there's some alligators in there. And uh, they're, they're God's creatures, too. But you don't want to tangle up with them because it could be very dangerous. There's also gnats and mosquitoes, and there's leeches, and there's parasites, and there's things that could kill you. All right? So that swamp that we're trying to live in out here where there's no rules, there's no banks, nothing like that, just no standards whatsoever, again— we want to be lazy because, because to uphold a standard, to uphold a standard and a value system, to uphold and make sure that those banks stay steady and that river, which produces life, by the way, guides in the right direction, it takes work. And incompetence and laziness that leads to the incompetence, they're not going to do the work. We're living in a lazy society. And it pisses me off, man. When I see the fact that people just can't get it right, just don't want to do it right, just want to be lazy and let it go. And here's the thing. 
they want to change the roles. It's being thrown in your face day in and day out. They want men to be women. They want women to be men. What they want us to be is some androgynous hermaphrodite that has no sense of sexuality or gender characteristic. They want you just to be some, some uh, you know, anthropomorphic being that just exists, right? Who knows what you are? And you're seeing it more and more. I don't know if it's the steroids in the chicken or the fluoride in the water or what the freak is going on, but some shit's going on that's weird, man. I have never seen more beta cook soy males. I mean, the, these dudes that walk around and I'm like, what is wrong? Like, what happened to boys that are just boys, right? That you, you, you throw a stick on the ground and a three-year-old boy picks it up and suddenly it becomes a gun. What happened to that? Play in the mud. Slap somebody. You know, get in a fight. Dust yourself off. You're like, oh, my God, you're advocating for violence. No, I'm advocating for a society that's not being run by pussies. <laughs> it's that simple. We have become weak. The Met Gala last night. My God in heaven. No, I don't even know. I don't know what the Met Gala is. I know it's a parade of pussies. Well-heeled, finely tuned, cabal of society. The elitists got together and celebrated what? Art? The Honestly, Metropolitan I, Opera? I don't know. I genuinely don't. <laughs> I think it's supposed to be fashion, but apparently fashion has entered its avant-garde phase where yeah. it all just looks like an autistic 10-year-old dressed himself. Well, it's like our good friend Carol Roth always says on her Twitter. On what occasion would you wear this? I mean, like these fashion shows, and by the way, it matters because fashion like actually is a representation of where you are as a society, you know? And I'm sorry, but right now the emperor has no clothes. Now, I don't know what the hell am I looking at right here. Now, is that a male or a female? That's a guy in what looks to be um, if Casper the Friendly Ghost had a wedding ceremony. What are we looking at here? That's a guy. Do, do you have, all right, play me some of these guys. Give me some guys. Give me some guys. What is with this? What is going on? Why? Where do you tuck your balls? What is this? Now, this is supposed to, what am I seeing? This, I'm literally breaking out. I'm getting hives. I'm getting hives. I need some more chest hair out. What's this dude? Do you know how ridiculously uncomfortable? What is that? Is that Wakanda gone white? What am I seeing? Is that the White Panther? That's, that's, is that, who is that? Is that Pablo Pascal? All right, Pedro. I don't know. Y'all all look the same. Listen, Pedro Pascal, who is like what? He's supposed to be a modern day Burt Reynolds, right? Yep. Something he's like supposed that, yeah. to be the current leading man. He's, he's yep. the Mandalorian for F's sake. Here he is. He's wearing, he's, what's he wearing? He's got on short pants and a blouse and a necktie and who, what? I'm, what is this, dude? Like this is supposed, now I understand. I know that Hollywood and the elites don't represent you guys. I get that you're not going to put this on and work on the trap. What is this? I don't see the screen well enough to see this fairiness. What are we seeing? Is that, is that a dude in like a ball gown? I, I don't get it. I don't get it. Kayla, turn this around. I, listen, I, this makes me want to drink Bud Light. This is what they're cramming down your throats and normalizing. All right, who's that? Who's that person? Alex that's Chris, a chick. Kristen Stewart. Who, so that's Kristen Stewart. Yeah. Twilight, no. Twilight. Yeah, Twilight. Right. Yeah. So that's, she's trying to look like a guy. Like that's Johnny Depp meets Austin Butler. Like, is that a girl? Okay, so they're, they're making the girls try to wear, like, men's suits. That's a girl. That's a girl. And they're making the girls look like guys. See, this is what? Uh, is that? Is that Jared Leto? Yeah, it's Jared Leto. Yeah. I'm ashamed that I even know their names. <laughs> it's funny you brought up androgyny because I was talking to Chris earlier. There's they a, just see, there's a pussy. Oh, right that was there. Jer that I was told also, you guys. That was also Jared Leto. 
That's Jared Leto in a cat suit? Yeah. Okay. And that's another pussy. <laughs> it's another cat. That one's actually literally called Doja Cat. That's her name. What's her name? Doja Cat. Doja Cat. You can recognize that one? From Who's Russia that? Russia to the carpet. Who is it? Brittany Griner. Oh, that's Brittany. Brittany Griner's got a penis. That's Brittany Griner. I saw, I saw her interview the other day. Very deep-throated girl. <laughs> uh, you know Chad, what I like to see is that cockroach. Did you see the cockroach on the red oh, carpet? Oh, yeah, hit the cock. Chad, yeah, do you play think that it's a humiliation right ritual with some of these outfits? Yeah, that, that, that's a ridiculous outfit right there. Here they come. We got it. Oh, there's a red, there's a cockroach. There's a roach. Walking across the uh, the Met Gala. They're taking pictures of the roach. Oh, my God. That's a demon. That's a demon trying to flee, and he stomped it. He stomped the roach. Where's PETA? Oh, he stomped the roach. That could have been Miley Cyrus, for all we know. What they don't realize, they think they got the roach. The roach attached itself to his foot. Ah, it's still alive. <laughs> and then he kicks it off and then just runs away. They never killed the roach. Yeah, roaches don't die, man. Yeah. They're going to survive the nuclear Armageddon. Honestly, the roach is probably wondering what the hell he walked into. <laughs> yeah. He's like, wow. Yeah. He's probably Whoa! asking, like, please squish me and put me out of my misery. Oh, my God. This is, this is where we are. This is where we are. All right, guys. Texas Superfoods is a new sponsor to the show. <clears throat> you know, we talked about... Um, how important it is to do business with people that share your values and uh, people you can trust. The founder of Texas Superfoods, he's a veteran, he's a Texan, he's a homeopathic doctor. He's committed to getting people uh, out of the American medical system and take your health into your own hands. And so he developed Texas Superfoods, vine ripened, antioxidant rich. He uses raw natural fruits and vegetables. And we learned, you know, we learned the last couple of years that we were reminded you got to keep your immune system up. And uh, there's a bunch of garbage out there on the market that tries to fix symptoms to your health issues without actually fixing you. So the simple truth is that your body, when you feed it properly, has an amazing ability to ward off and even fight disease. Now, uh, I take Texas Superfoods every day. I feel great. Don't worry about my diet so much when I'm on the road because Texas Superfood gives my body what it needs to keep me functioning. So give them a try. Head over to TexasSuperfoods.com. That's TexasSuperfoods.com. We'll be right back. Hey guys, welcome back. While I'm in a good, solid, pissed off mood, um, let me talk to you about this. Have you ever heard that old saying, uh, uh, an ounce of prevention is worth a pound of cure? Well, it tends to be a truism in society, and it's definitely one for the thing that I want to talk to you about today. Folks, I, I'm going to level with you because I always do, because that's my job, because I take it as an article of faith that you're well equipped to handle the truth. Now, I strongly believe that we are on the absolute verge of a revolutionary change in this country, one which will rival the horrors of every other evil committed in our name and upon our soil for its vainglorious flaunting of the natural order of things. So in short, I believe that we are no more than a stone's throw away from seeing the normalization and perhaps even the legalization of pedophilia in the United States. Now, the signs are ubiquitous, everything from the absolute vital necessity of things like drag queen story hour i mean they gotta have it right gotta have it now they've created the acronyms for new terminology coming our way you know uh, the the thing which most always signals that the left is about to shift that dominant paradigm once again in whatever direction they feel places the most power at their feet that's right they always create a damn acronym so you got maps right it stands for minor attracted persons now did you ever hear that when you were a kid no you didn't and neither did i why because we call them what they were pedos, pedophiles, but we're taking the edge off the language surrounding it because that's what they do every time they want to soft pedal the outrage surrounding whatever shiny, bright new idea they're going to try to shoehorn into your society and daily lives. I don't think it's hyperbole to assume that the same way we've gradually fallen victim to the dogmatic tenets of so-called tolerance and acceptance, we, the people, are on shaky enough moral ground that we will cave to them. Listen, it's only a matter of time we're going to cave to this. Now, you and I don't like it, but society, they're going to eat it up. And so 
as I'm so frequently willing to do, even when it costs me having to listen to the consternation of those who are weaker willed, I'll be happy to propose a solution for this BS. Get out the wood chipper. Get out the wood chipper, folks. Slap that deep, deep Fargo, North Dakota accent on there. Flip the switch to the on position and let's get rid of some pedophiles. Now, I'm not talking about vigilante justice here. I'm not. I'm not talking about that. Although some of that is appealing. It's pretty appealing to hear about. No, I'm talking about laws, folks. I'm talking about laws on the books, strictly adhered to laws. You commit an act of pedophilia, we're not sending you off to be a ward of the state where we feed you and our tax money is going to shelter you in some prison, just rolling the dice that hopefully someone's going to shank you out in the yard for being a kid diddler. No, it's through the shedder, my friend. You're going through the shredder. And I'll tell you what, if you survive to the other end, you can go free. How about that? Instituting the death penalty for this kind of thing might seem like a harsh move, maybe to some of you. Well, that's because it is. I want it to be effing harsh. But it's absolutely the necessary giant leap backward from the edge of the cliff that we desperately need as a society. We've got to send a message out of here. Not only the people who would directly harm our children, but to those who have anything to do with their sexual harm. Maps? Maps? You talk about being a minor attracted person? You say, well, I haven't done anything yet. Well, you get an ankle bracelet. We're going to monitor your ass. How about that? You groomers out there wandering around the halls of academia, rewriting the source code for a new generation to accept the unacceptable. Yeah, we got eyes on you too. I hate to be that guy, folks, but as far as I can see, the wood chipper's about the best stopgap we have between us and the relative hell of a society that permits these dangerous people to keep on breathing our air. That's what I think about. Grind them up, turn them into juice, man. Pedo juicers. That's what the wood chippers are for. You know, um, you know, uh, Ron DeSantis, governor of Florida. I'll be in Florida uh, in a couple of weeks. Be down there in uh, Wesley Chapel outside, just north of Tampa. It's side splitters. Come out there and hang out with me. I'm doing four shows in two nights. Going to have a little fun, do a little comedy. Uh, always a great crowd there in Tampa. Tell your friends, anybody in southwest Florida, tell them come to the show. And uh, make the drive. Let's go. Um, he he just he's just written into a bill for uh, for the death penalty for capital punishment for child molesters. Good, good. Because they're gonna again they're gonna change they're gonna put an acronym around it. Oh, he's a minor attracted person. You know, it's it's just a it's just a, a mental illness. It's a person something he was born with. You know, people are born with some weird shit, man. Sometimes somebody has a sixth finger on one hand, you know? I, I get that. Like, there, there's some weird stuff. Sometimes you got webbed toes. Well, I mean, when you have a sixth finger, you have to cut it off. <laughs> yeah. I mean, typically you might right? take that right off. I have thought, like, maybe yeah. we should bring back some public executions. It seems barbaric. No, no, 1,000% do it. Seems effective, right? 1,000% do it. Listen, we've already watched the body cam footage of people getting shot in the street. We see executions out on a curb in the middle of whatever city where some cranked out person puts a gun to some homeless person's head and kills them on a curb. We see all that stuff. We've been so desensitized ties to it but let's let's bring back you did the crime there'll be no time just build the gallows out in the street and just whoop, open it up and there it goes the platform disappears and the rope pulls taut Cow! and the neck the neck snaps it's over put them in a wood chipper do it televise it bring it back now, the problem is, the problem is, the people they want to execute are people like you and me. <laughs> they want to execute people like you and me for having these ideas of being plain spoken on this bullshit. The kid diddlers, they want to let go free. They want to explain them away with a damn acronym or a mental illness. Some form of ex acceptance. Oh, hey, just born with it. He was born with it. Yeah, I mean, maybe you were born with your tongue attached, you know? They clip that. <laughs> you could talk normal again. This isn't a lisp. <laughs> this is a sickness. In society, you 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 are you are impressed. You you. And here's the other thing. To, 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 you hate this word, so I'm going to say it. You groomers out there, 
And you say, I'm not a groomer. Yeah, you're, yeah. Oh, listen, no, no, no. <clears throat> if your kid, if your boy, if your son says, you know, I, uh, I want to I wanna be like my sister. I want to be a little girl. Well, maybe ask why. Don't, don't start with chemical castration. Like, why? You might just find out that maybe, maybe they like the girl toys, like the girl toys that have more options. You know, Barbie comes with a house, changes the clothes, clothes, a Corvette, and all these different things. And G.I. Joe just has one gun. Like, maybe they want, you know, maybe there's some why to it. Don't start with the whole, oh, we've got to start referring to him as a her. What do you want your name to be, Susie? Stop all this. There's a lot of things. When, when I was three years old, I wanted to be a truck. <laughs> Nobody tried to change my oil. They didn't, they didn't put a dipstick in me. You see where I'm going? This is the whole thing, guys. <laughs> you guys are wanting to change your genders, change your identity. My point is when you start affirming a child's fantasies, you're creating delusion in their mind. They don't have a fully developed prefrontal cortex. They don't know who they are. At least, I didn't know who the hell I was until I was 42. Okay. Exactly. I'm still trying to figure it out. I'm 50. I've known who I am for about eight years. <laughs> Listen, my point is, in a facetious way, I'm saying this. Until you're 25, you don't even have the brain capacity to have a sense of identity. Not fully. Not fully. So anything that you affirm, that's why we put them in school then. That's why, that's, that's why, you know, a kid under the age of four can learn a lot of languages really fast. A lot of languages. I see, I see these babies that can do sign language to tell you they're hungry or they got to go poo-poo. They can do sign language before they can speak. I've seen it. Because the parents impressed upon them a certain ability that coincided with their capabilities at that age. Now, if you are reinforcing fantasies, you're creating delusions. And that makes you a groomer. You're grooming them to be something they're not. And it, it revolves around their sexuality, which should have nothing to do with children. Now, am I saying you're a pedophile? No, but I, I'm calling you an abuser. Now, you may be actively doing it, and many people, they are doing it because they have, you know, Munchausen syndrome by proxy, and they're living out some kind of ailment through their kid because they're wanting to be victimized and an oppressed class themselves. And maybe the blacks have gotten all the attention for all these years by being an oppressed minority, and you privileged white people in America need to figure out a way to be marginalized yourself, and so you got to have some kind of crazy f***ing problem with your sexuality. No, I'm not wrong, and somebody's got to say it. Somebody's got to say it. Stop being so oppressed. Stop getting on TikTok. I mean, if you didn't cry on TikTok, were there really tears at all? I don't think they did. It's a, it's a tree in the forest scenario, man. If you don't cry on TikTok, were the tears really real? Yeah, if Did getting, they really fall from your face? You got to get on there and glimpse. bitch about how somebody misgendered you, used the wrong pronoun, or dead named you. Get a f***ing grip. My God, please, put them on the beaches of Normandy. Give me time travel. That's where I want to go. I want to I go back. <laughs> Let, let's take a crew back and put them on a boat. Oh, my Lord, have mercy. This is where we are, folks. But no, we use, you're right. Bring back the people. You touch a child, you die. You touch a child, you die. And we're seeing more and more of these stories that are out there. I mean, my God, UNC has a whole program. Watch Sarah's stuff. Sarah's about, I think she's about to put some stuff out. You sent me some stuff where, where this University of North Carolina, they're talking about children as young as two and three years old. Transitioning them. And, ah. Uh, uh, chemical hormone changes uh, uh, anyway okay all right speaking of that those of you who own guns you have to clean those guns and uh who knows maybe we're in war sooner than i think uh cleaning your gun is a necessary hassle in life it's a dirty job but you got to do it the patches are messy the root rope system thing the little boar snake it doesn't really work that well 
um, it hides the dirt, so you don't know if it's clean or not. So I want you to start using Barrel Buddy. I want to make this a thing among gun owners. My buddies over at Barrel Buddy created this thing. It compresses to fill the interior of your gun's barrel. It cleans the rifling grooves as you push it through. It comes in seven different sizes, which will match any caliber firearm. It's composed of polymers that don't leave behind the residual particles. And uh, it scrubs, it collects the particulates, it absorbs the remaining residue. You can even lubricate your firearm while you're cleaning. So, Cleaning your gun, it's important. It's a part of being a responsible gun owner, and Barrel Buddy is a totally new concept. Better way to take care of your firearm. So get some today. I guarantee you're going to love them. Go to BarrelBuddy.com today. That's BarrelBuddy.com. We'll be right back. Hey, guys, real quick. uh, We've got on the phone our friend uh, Dog the Bounty Hunter. Welcome back to the show. Dog, how are you, man? Where are you? I'm in uh, Naples, Florida. Naples, Florida, man. Listen, I don't know how much you're paying attention to this crazy shooting in Texas that happened in Cleveland, Texas. Uh, this guy, you know, apparently this is a Mexican national. This is a guy who came came here. He shot these this Honduran family. I mean, it, this is a crazy story. This guy, poof, he's into the wind. Do you think they'll ever find this guy? Oh, absolutely. One thing about Texas is, it's known for the United States of Texas, <laughs> and it is still uh, number one law and order. Uh, you know, I'm absolutely positive they'll catch him. It's just a matter of time. That's a wooded area, so you know, I'm sure he's a, in the woods somewhere hiding. You, you think so? I mean, you think he's still in that area? I mean, I, my assumption. I know if it were. If it were me in in his shoes, this guy's been deported five times. He keeps coming back. Obviously, he knows the route to and from Mexico. I would think he'd be back in Mexico. What do you what do you think the chances of that are? Well, he's got cartel tattoos, mm-hmm. and I've also heard rumors that he was an informant in the United States against some of the cartel. Mm. So that is a no for Mexico. Once they get him back there, I guess he's been four or five times. You know, taken back. I think he comes right back because of fear of the cartel. Mm. So- and uh, I, you know, when you kill, uh, you know, I don't know if there's a if the right wording. There's honor among thieves, but yeah. when you kill a child in any kind of, and you belong to any kind of criminal organization, uh, that's a no-no. Mm. So even the cartel. If he goes down there, they know there's a huge reward. I think it's up to a hundred grand now. Uh, they're going to catch this guy and either turn him in or kill him and leave him where somebody can find him. So he doesn't have a a very bright future. If you'll remember, six months or maybe so ago, a fugitive out of Texas with almost exactly the same case broke out of a Bluebird bus. Mm a Texas Department of Corrections bus, and he was also uh, had tats almost identical to this guy, Cartel, again. And he also uh, snitched or informed on the cartel, and he was he couldn't go back to Mexico. And, you know, they hunted a couple days and waited for him to steal a car. And then they have, of course, every state has license plate recognition. And as soon as he stole the car, license plate recognition is on taxi cabs, on gas stations, on on uh, stoplights, stop signs. What it is is a little camera. And as you drive by, it takes a picture of your plate and puts it in a data database. And then you can run that plate in the database and see where the last time that car was. Yeah. So the previous fugitive, again in Texas, was hiding, hiding. And once he stole the car, the license plate recognition got him. And, of course, he shot it out. So they have checked. I'm in contact with some of the law enforcement down there. They have checked. Uh, probably a hundred mile radius of any cars that have been stolen. There's none that they could connect to him at least. Yeah. And uh, he does have a wife there. So let's say he did uh, 
get a ride somewhere. He would have had to call from his cell or her cell phone for the ride uh, or anybody else in that house. I know the cops, when he bolted, when he ran, he left his gun and his cell phone. So I'm sure the cops have went through the cell phone of his and his wife to see if he made any phone calls. But, uh, you know, I have some good uh, friends down in there, some bounty hunters in Conroe. And I talked to them this morning, and they also think because of the woods that he could stay eight to ten days in those woods, let it die down a little bit, make contact with a family member or a friend, and, you know, rear his evil head back up. Yeah. Well, there it is. Dwayne Chapman, Dog the Bounty Hunter. You're rarely wrong, brother. So we'll wait and see how this thing thing turns out, man. Thank you so much for the time, and stay safe out there, buddy. Yes, sir. Aloha. Thank you very much. Take care, brother. Talk to you soon. All right, guys, you know it's no secret there has been a war on comedy lately, and we're not allowed to joke about anything these days. Well, Blaze TV is embarking on a mission to save comedy and impact the culture, and we're launching this mission Thursday. May 4th, that's right, releasing our first ever full-length comedy film. Yes, you heard that right. Blaze TV is releasing a full-length comedy film. The movie is called Reopening. It's a mockumentary that follows the cast and crew of a small community theater as they struggle to reopen during the heart of the COVID-19 pandemic. It's a brilliant work of satire using humor to expose and ridicule the insanity that swept the nation during the pandemic. We knew our audience would absolutely love it, so we're thrilled to be delivering it to you this week. It's funny stuff. Join us Thursday, May 4th, 8 p.m. Eastern for the re- for the premiere of Reopening. We'll be streaming a live pre-show on YouTube and Facebook with members of the cast, but the movie itself will be available exclusively on Blaze TV. So if you want to enjoy the fun, head over to blazetv.com slash reopening. Use promo code reopening. Get $20 off your subscription. blazetv.com slash reopening. Use promo code reopening. We'll be right back. All right, special thanks to our buddy Dog the Bounty Hunter for hanging out with us for a few minutes. And, of course, uh, Kayla George, Chris Cruz, and Ace. <laughs> Let's love Brandon. Oh, man, I tell you what, that Met Gala stuff had me dying, bro. I, these people, it's a circus, man. Trot out the clowns. Uh, I'm going to be in East Texas, over to Cab, Texas, on Saturday night. Then I'm headed up to Kansas for a couple of shows, then going over to Florida, then who knows where is next. All over the place, me and Zach Rushing are doing two nights in June. We're going to be in Biloxi, Mississippi, and then in Beaumont in late June. So get your tickets. Uh, you can go to chadpads.com still or chadpratherlife.com and get your tickets. Come hang out. 76forever.com is where you get your gear. And uh, go check out realwomensclub.com as well. We're in this fight, man, and you're just having fun doing it. Hey, listen, uh, don't forget the uh, premiere of reopening the brand new mockumentary comedy movie. First ever for Blaze TV. Don't miss it. You subscribe at blazetv.com slash reopening. Use promo code reopening to save $20 on your annual subscription. Guys, we love you. God bless you. We'll see you tomorrow night. Goodbye. (laughs) Goodbye.